Speaking of Trey Turner, he joins us now. Trey, thanks for calling in, man. How we doing? We're doing pretty good. How you doing? Fantastic. How's that hammy? <laughs> Better. Um, you know, obviously don't want to be hurt, but uh, could have been could have been worse than it was. And um, you know, trying to make the most of it and not be too bored and and uh, get back healthy. So I said this earlier, Trey, um, for an athlete, right? And and you were all to such a good start, hitting the ball well, um, and doing everything that you were doing. I know it has to be difficult being out and not being a part of what the team is doing right now, just from an individual standpoint and being a competitor. How have you been able to sort of manage that, um, taking your time, not rushing back, but also knowing that, listen, you were in a pretty good groove and you'll love to be out there playing right now? Yeah, just trying to take it one day at a time, um, you know, focus on what's, what's in front of me. I feel like the rehab's been good, um, you know, listen to the training staff and whatnot. So it's been nice because I feel like I've made a little bit of progress every single day, um, and I think that's something I can, you know, focus on and be positive. But like you're saying, it's tough watching the guys go out there and, and not being able to contribute. But we've been playing good. Um, you know, the guys have picked me up, and, uh, we've had some injuries this year, but, you know, the next man up, and we've been playing some good baseball. So um, it could be fun, but, yeah, I'm definitely jealous um, of those guys. I, I want to be out there. I want to play with them and, um, you know, contribute, but they're playing well. We're talking to Trey Turner. Now, Trey, you have an item for the Phillies Fantastic Auction, which is going on now. I think bidding goes through Sunday, where someone can get a private hitting lesson with you. Looking back on your you know, time playing ball. Is there one hitting coach, one person that you had that you thought was most important in your development in who you are now? Yeah, I mean, every step of the way, there's there's definitely guys that I remember or that stick out. But um, the easy one, you know, for me is is Kevin, because when I had him in Washington, I was um, becoming a little bit better hitter and um, trying to learn how to drive the ball more. And, and, and Kevin and actually Joe Dillon was there as well, um, you know, former Phillies hitting coach. Um, they were both there, and they helped me kind of take that next step in my career where, you know, I was kind of a speed average guy, and I wanted to be a little bit more dangerous and, and, and drive the ball and drive the ball the other way. And uh, in 2019, after I uh, broke my finger and came back, I kind of figured that out a little bit and started to use my legs a little bit more and, um, kind of unlocked another another level, and you know the next few years after that uh, continued to get better and better, and that kind of set me on the path, um, you know, to, to to today is is that 2019 season. So um, those are the two that stick out the most. Is there if you could give somebody one piece of advice about hitting, whether it's mental, whether it's physical, what is do you think is the the one thing you would tell somebody is the most important thing? Oh man, um, <laughs> it really depends how good you are. But uh, what, what if you're terrible? <laughs> well, you need you need to make contact. I guess is okay. most important right. at that, yeah. the most basic level. You need to make contact and and put the ball in play. And once you can continuously make contact, then you can start to you know develop and try to do different things. But at the you know at the highest level, I think it's it's more mental. It's more um, the confidence you can see. Um, you know, the best hitters in the game uh, think they're the best hitters every single day, regardless if they feel good or not. So um depends who you are. But, um, yeah, the mental side definitely comes in uh, a lot once you're at this level. You know, one of the coolest parts of the story or of the start of the season for me has been how you've kind of taken Johan Roas under, under your wing here a little bit. Like, what, what has it been working with Johan? Obviously a young player, got off to a slow start, kind of figuring it out now. What's it kind of been like taking a young player like Johan Rojas under your wing, and, and what has that meant to you? Yeah, he started um, to talk to me, uh, you know, random times during the day about uh, hitting and, you know, kind of a, a week before leading up to when we hit in the cage uh, for a while, he'd been asking me questions, and I talked to him a little bit in spring training, too, um, about certain things. And um, so just the curiosity and the wanting to get better is there, and I think that's most important is, uh, you know, being so good at such a young age to ask questions and try to get better, I think says a lot about him. Um, so then, you know, we got in the cage and just trying to, find out you know what what makes him tick what what he likes um why he does things and you know when you have those conversations you get a little more in depth then you can you can help 
um, in certain areas. And, um, you know, you can see the talents there, the athletic abilities there, and it's about being consistent. So, um, you know, I feel like he's in the last, you know, two, three weeks, he's hit the ball really well, even when he doesn't have, you know, the stats there. It feels like he's hit line drives all over the place. So, um, you know, it's cool when that happens and, and, you know, you get happy for him because you can see, you know, the adjustment paid off, the work pays off. And, um, you know, it's going to be an ongoing thing his entire career where he's going to go through slumps and he's going to be hot and, and, and uh, things like that happen for everybody. But to see him, you know, take that step forward, I think was, was huge. And um, hopefully it continues throughout the season and, and in the rest of his career. Now, I believe your fantastic auction item is up for like $7,000 for the, the private hitting lesson with Trey Turner. Did Bryce Harper have to pay you for that for the private hitting lesson you gave him a, a week ago, or is that or is that free? Uh, it's free, but you know, it's funny is um, I walked around the cage with a with a a, a tip um, on my screen, you know, fifteen percent, twenty percent, twenty five percent tip, and asked him, if, you know, if you wanted to tip me, that 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 would uh, that'd be generous of you and nice of you. So you know, I played a little joke on him afterwards, but. Um, no, I love talking to hitting, and if anybody wants to um, talk and, and work on swing or approach or whatever it is, um, I like talking about it. So, um, yeah, I noticed a little thing with him, and, and uh, you know, lucky enough, I, you know, it's hard to say something to Bryce, obviously, because he's so good. It's like you don't want to, you know, make him go backwards when, when, when really he's uh, one of the best hitters in the game. And um, it was nice to have him hit those homers, I think, three days in a row um, right after that. So, um, you know, things like that are pretty cool. It's not stuff you see every day as a fan, <clears throat> but uh, it happens all the time in the locker room, whether it's, you know, pitching, fielding, hitting. It happens where the guys are, are conversing, and I think that's what makes this team cool. Speaking of the team, Trey, best team in baseball right now with the top record in baseball. You were out there for 33 of those games, so you certainly were a huge part of where you guys are at right now. I'm wondering from your perspective, getting a chance to sort of watch the guys from afar from the dugout right you're not out there playing but you're watching the guys from the dugout anything that you know surprises you or that you've noticed being sort of a observer versus being out there over these last couple of weeks watching the team um i don't know if anything really surprises me i mean i know the talent we have but um i just think sosa's played so good man he uh He's been getting, you know, more at bats. He's been playing more, obviously, since I've been out, and he's been doing such a good job um, defensively and and offensively. Um, you know, in the Mets series, just the at bats he had, some of the hits, you know, off right-handed pitching when he doesn't get to face, you know, right-handed pitching a lot. So, um, guys have been asked to do a lot um, in the last two weeks, play different positions and do different things and hit in different spots and. Um, to keep playing the way we have, I think is just really cool. But um, I think sometimes guys like Sos don't get enough credit um, and just how good they are. And, and uh, I think that's been kind of the coolest thing since, you know, I've been out is watching some of those guys step up and have good at-bats. And, you know, Pache is another one that comes to mind. You know, didn't get a chance to play early on very much. In Miami, he was hitting the ball great. So um, I think that's, that's pretty cool. We're talking to Trey Turner from the Phillies. Trey, one of the things we debate on the – on the radio all the time is you know when when topper sits a guy you know versus a lefty or a righty or a topper doesn't give a guy a day off when we think he might need one what is that conversation like as a player when when the lineup comes out or you know or he tells you hey you're not playing tonight is there a back and forth is there a conversation what that happens what is that like in the clubhouse um you might be asking the wrong guy, the wrong guy just because I, I, I tell – usually I tell the manager and I told Rob this, you know, kind of when I signed here is I just play every day unless I, like, can't play. I'm just going to – you know, I'm going to play. So I always thought off days were kind of like a benching. Um, yeah. And so, you know, at times last year, obviously, that was that was different for me because, you know, not playing well, you try to get, you know, even a mental break as much as a physical break. But um, usually when, you know, my managers have come to me in the past, it's just been like, no, I'm good, I'm fine. And like, no, you're not going to play tomorrow. And, and you kind of argue with them for a second. And then you kind of see who wins. Um, <laughs> I feel like usually I win because I'm like, there's no way I'm sitting tomorrow I can play. Why, why would I sit? Um, and every once in a while, they they don't give me an option. So um, it's kind of it's kind of awkward. But I know um, other guys kind of see it coming too. You know, they see lefty on the schedule already on the schedule. They kind of have an idea 
what their role is, and and I think those roles are are pretty clear. And I know Rob does a good job of that, and you know, talking to guys and and letting them know what he expects of them. So, um, you know, there's all sorts of conversations, but that's why you know the manager is key and keeping everybody happy and and being honest and. And I think uh, Rob does a great job of that, but uh, I usually I usually try to weasel my way out of out of those off days. Yeah, he seems to have a, a good feel for it. I guess when when someone's struggling, I guess for you the best thing to do is to keep playing. And then, but I guess that's not the same for everyone. Where a mental break may may help one player and not help another. Yeah, I think that's that, that's important to know your players. And and like I said, I think Rob does a great job of that, but. You know, I always thought for me, it's like, well, how am I going to fix, you know, my swing or whatever it is? Um, how am I going to get better if I'm not playing? It's kind of how I always looked at it. And I always looked at it as I'm healthy. So um, this is my job. This is what I'm here to do. I'm here I'm here to play. So um, it's that balance. And, and I think, um, you know, the mental break is great. And maybe even a physical break is great. But just being competitors, and we all want to play as much as we can and get that opportunity to um, contribute. So um, I know that's me. I know that's a lot of guys in this clubhouse that they just want to be out there as much as they possibly can. But there's only so many spots and at-bats for guys. And, uh, you know, sometimes you got to wait your turn or sometimes you need a little break and let the other guy pick you up for a second, and then, uh, you know, you get right back to it. Now, when we talked in the spring, obviously Bryson Stott was rubbing it in a little bit that he beat you in the, in the stolen base thing last year. I mean, he's two ahead right now. I mean, Trey, you can't let him get too far ahead of you. You got to chase down yeah. Sada this year. Uh, to be honest with you, right now that's the last uh, thing <laughs> I'm thinking about, you know, <laughs> with uh, the hammy injuries, just getting healthy. And, um, but, uh, you know, I have a built-in excuse for him. If I do beat <laughs> him, true. if I do beat him, missing, you know, however many weeks I'm going to miss, if I do beat him, I promise you I'll never let him hear the end of it. But... <laughs> Um, if I if I don't, I got a built-in excuse for him, so I'm sure he'll uh, he'll wear me out about that. Yeah, Chad, I don't know what the hell Jack's doing here. We're trying to get you healed up from a hamstring injury, and he's <laughs> he's challenging yeah. your stolen base manhood. Yeah, it was ridiculous how your stolen base streak got ended too. I, that shouldn't no, count. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah, it's one of those unfortunate things, but um, you know, it's baseball. There's some things. Sometimes those things happen, and. Um, you know, you try to do, you try to make a team play, and and you know, do what you're asked of, and and it is what it is. That you know, hopefully another big long streak. But uh, but usually I uh, I usually um, tell Bryson to look at you know the career stats when he starts talking to me about uh, <laughs> stolen bases and this and that. I got I always tell him he's got a long way to go. So uh, I like to remind him about that. Well, we appreciate your time, Trey. You know, when we talked to you in the spring, as Jack said. The, to, Every player we talked to, it was important to get off to a good start and compete for the division and all those things. And the team has lived up to every expectation in that way, no matter who's out of the lineup, who's on the mound, and it, it's been great. So we're, we're excited to get you back on the field, um, and good luck with the fantastic auction as well, um, and good luck getting healthy. Appreciate you guys. Thank you very much. All right, thanks, all right, sir. Robin.